Hi, I'm Nicolene Peck. I starred in an episode of The World's Strictest Parents back in 2009. And in this World's Strictest Parents reaction video, we're going to see that being a mom is hard, but my sister offers some help to Hannah that she won't soon forget. <laughs> absolutely love my sister. She is an incredible mother. And in this particular video, she was a very young mother. So she has multiple children now and they're getting very big. But at this time, she was a mother of just one, her first one. And her baby was right about the same age as Hannah's baby, Tanisha. And so the BBC crew thought it would be fun for Hannah and Janelle to have a conversation about motherhood because Hannah was not always staying with her baby. When she would go out partying and stuff like that, the baby was often left at home. And my sister was trying to help her see the truth to what she was doing and maybe what changes she needed to make. And I think some of it got through to Hannah, even though it might have taken a few days for it to fully sink in. Anyway, some really great wisdom here to help Hannah because being a mom is hard. And I think my sister Janelle really understood that. So let's take a look. Nicolene's youngest sister, Janelle, has a baby boy the same age as Hannah's daughter. You have a little munchkin this this big. Yeah. And and he depends on me for everything. Yeah. Tanisha depends on you for everything. And that includes learning everything that they need to know yeah. to like survive in the world when they're adults. I cannot believe it that someone that is a mom is willing to just go out, drink, smoke, take two days off of being a mom just so they can get their own fulfillment. I don't take drugs or drink of hands, eh? So, like, when my mom has it, I think this is my free time to go and do what I want. So, like, she doesn't know that I'm actually taking drugs and drinking. But you should be going home and sleeping where your child sleeps. Yeah. That is what a mom does. So then, you know what? When Davis wakes up, I'm there. If he wakes up in the middle of the night, I'm there. Yeah. He knows that I love him more than drugs. I love him more yeah, I than love alcohol. More than drugs and alcohol. But actions prove otherwise sometimes. It doesn't because how can I love alcohol and and drugs over something that I've actually created in my body? Well, that's a good question. Okay, so a pretty abrupt but powerful ending there. I'm glad that she did say that at the end. That's a good question. How can you? Because truthfully, what my sister was trying to get through to Hannah was what you're doing is actually sending a message to your daughter, to your family that you might not recognize is being sent. So Hannah says, well, but I'm not drinking and doing drugs in front of my child. I'm not. But Janelle says, yeah, but you're going off for days at a time and leaving the child and you're going and sleeping with other people and doing drugs and drinking. And so you're actually abandoning the child. You're not putting the child first. You may not be showing it to the child, but it's not too long before the child knows what the mom is doing. And the mom's priorities will end up getting skewed. You know, I think it was really powerful the way that she just kind of laid it out for Hannah. And Hannah was fighting back, but I've got to say that by the end of this video even, I think you'll see a change of heart in Hannah and where she's really starting to recognize what it means to be a mom and some of the hard parts of being a mom, especially a teenage mom. I loved hearing my little nephew, who is not so little anymore, he's quite tall, Davis gurgle and babble and make little noises and breathe while they were talking. It was so cute. Just brings it really home to how sweet and tender those little babies are. So let's go ahead and see some about Hannah's home life and hear from her mother even. Hannah's rebellious lifestyle started when her own family life broke down. We were like a close family. Like we all got on and then my mum and my dad split up and then they decided to get a divorce. So then we lost contact with my dad then. Hannah hasn't seen her dad for over five years. I got the blame for it. I think that's where a lot of Hannah's anger comes from as well. She could have tried to make it work, and now we've been brought up without a dad, and I miss him. 
So I do blame you on for that. So here we see Hannah with her baby Tanisha, who is so precious, so cute. And we see Hannah's mom. And we hear a little bit about Hannah's backstory and how Hannah's mom and dad sounds like had a pretty hard breakup and how Hannah is blaming her mother for that and really is feeling the loss of a father. I feel like that's an important thing for us to remember. Children do want a mother and a father. It's just part of our hardwiring to know who we came from, where we came from. We search for that. And if we feel disconnected from that, it feels like a hole. And so that's why the ideal is for all children to be raised by their mother and father. Now, not every home has the ideal. That's how it goes. And certainly that's the case for Hannah. But there is something that's lacking there. And maybe a father's influence would have tempered some of Hannah's behaviors and more risky things that she did. Maybe she wouldn't do as many of those things. Maybe she wouldn't have become a teen mom. I read a statistic years ago in my capacity as president of the Worldwide Organization for Women of teen moms and how many of them came from single mom homes. And the number was alarming. I'm sure the statistic is different now, so I'm not gonna share that, but I do feel like the present of a father makes a difference in a girl's life. And as we see Hannah loving her baby and just enjoying those little moments with her baby, I mean, when she's on camera, you know she loves that baby so much, but she's also conflicted with some of the things that she wants to do as a young person. And one of the hard things that a mom does is decides her priorities, what's most important. And that's what we saw with my sister, Janelle, talking to Hannah. So Janelle told Hannah, but your priorities are not evidenced by your behaviors. There was incongruency there. In another video that I do, another reaction video on this World's Strictest Parents episode, you actually see Hannah's full transformation. I don't want to ruin that for you now, but I want you to know that she gets to a place where she is literally filled with tears because she recognizes that she wants to be a different mom than she is being to her child. In fact, when she went home, she was so resolved to do the hard work of being a mom. And she even duplicated many of the things that we did in our family, even to the point of going to her church. So she saw that we went to our church. So she decided, okay, I'm going to take Tanisha to my church. And I remember she sent me an email and said, you know, it was kind of boring and I didn't understand a lot of it, but I took her there because I don't want her to turn out like me. She went home very motivated to make a change and to become a different mother. And indeed, she has become a good mom. And I'm really proud of her for the things that she's done well in her life and for some of those priorities that she has been consistently working on keeping straight for herself. It takes constant work when you're a mom to keep your priorities straight and not become selfish. And this was the beginning of that mindset shift. For Hannah. If you've enjoyed this reaction video, you'll probably love my others because I do a reaction video on almost this entire episode of The World's Strictest Parents. How about you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any of those reaction videos or any of my other great videos? Press the subscribe now and we'll see you next time.